America's unquenchable need for electrical power grows each year and will continue to grow for decades to come. But most significant sources of electrical power have serious drawbacks. Coal, oil, natural gas and nuclear power all raise concerns associated with waste materials, pollutants and other serious hazards. The three main renewable arenas being hydroelectric, wind and solar, the fuel comes to you. So you're not mining coal somewhere and having to load it in rail cars, bring it to wherever you're going, unload the rail cars, stockpile, maintain a stockpile, load it into the power plant to eventually be burned and then generate a byproduct that then you have to dispose of down the line. But emerging sources of renewable power like wind or solar are today limited in capacity and cannot alone keep pace with demand. You know, with wind there's a chance that there, you know, you don't have a windy day, you don't get any generation that day. Uh, solar is very inefficient. It, a, it requires a very large surface area to generate anything on a commercial scale. The area that you need is, is, is vast and, it, and it's a much larger investment on the front end. And then it's just that today, you know, the technology isn't as efficient. For hydroelectric, you just need water and gravity. This is why, for generations, countries around the world have depended heavily on hydroelectricity to power their economies and societies. A little bit about the project behind us. Uh, in 2009, Walsh was awarded the project to redevelop the Rainbow Dam power generation facility. And with that, uh, the facility is converting a 100-year-old facility that has eight turbines that generate approximately 34 megawatts of power and what we are doing is we're putting in a single turbine facility that is going to be capable of generating 62 megawatts of power. Hydroelectricity is powered by the force of flowing water, and water is plentiful and cheap in the United States. The water's been flowing here for generations and generations, and it will continue to flow for generations. As long as the river's flowing, your fuel is coming to you for free. Since hydro plants require virtually no fossil fuels to generate electricity, the cost of operating them is nearly immune to the fluctuating costs of fuel commodities such as coal, natural gas, and oil. With hydroelectric generation, you're going to see about a 90% uh, harness of the energy stored in the water, which ultimately results in about a third of the cost to produce power as opposed to a fossil fuel or a nuclear power plant. Hydroelectric plants produce nearly no direct waste and have a considerably lower output of greenhouse gas emissions than do fossil fuel powered plants. The rainbow facility that we're building behind us is 93% efficient and is also very fish friendly. Uh, fossil fuel and nuclear energy have long lasting effects on the environment, whereas the only environmental impact of a hydroelectric facility is simply the construction itself. From that point on, it is entirely a renewable form of energy and extremely efficient. Hydro plants are the most efficient and economical way to generate electricity. They have comparably lower maintenance and personnel costs and typically have considerably longer operational lifespans than fossil fuel plants. The design life on these plants is about 100 years. So this, the plant that's installed right now has been here since 1910. Uh, it's been here just over a century now. Same turbines have been running there for 100 plus years. This investment that these owners are putting in today will generate, you know, again, that much more capacity for another 100 plus years. And while hydro plants supply approximately 20% of the world's electricity, they supply almost 90% of the world's electricity derived from renewable sources. By contrast, the United States generates less than 10% of its power from hydroelectricity and only about 50% of its electricity derived from renewable sources. With its broad range of capabilities as an industry leader in the performance of general contracting, construction management, and design build projects, the Walsh Group is uniquely positioned to meet this urgent need for hydro plant construction. And in recognition of its ongoing efforts, Walsh was recently cited as the third largest U.S. hydro plant builder by Engineering News Record. Currently we are working on three hydro projects across the nation. One is in Montana, Rainbow. Second one is in Pennsylvania and Holtwood and the third one is here in Calton. It's a very remote area. One side is Indiana, the other side is obviously is Kentucky. We are standing on the Kentucky side and uh, we are gonna be constructing a um, submersible powerhouse 
for American municipal power. Three turbines will be installed. There are three horizontal bulb turbines, which uh, with combined, it will generate about 84 megawatts of power. The Walsh Group's reputation for superior construction of technically complex hydro plants is made possible by a combination of its vast self-performance capabilities and its proven track record of project management excellence. We don't always self-perform everything, but we have the ability to, be it front-end demolition, uh, drilling, blasting, the excavation, all the concrete, mechanical, HVAC, um, the foundation work, you know, whatever, whatever it is that needs to be done, we have the ability to self-perform that in-house. That allows us to maintain a schedule control, which is essential, and that also allows us to manage 100% of the quality. We're able to tap into our talents that we've grown over the years, and it takes those unique qualified talents in order to be able to build a facility like this. It's not just anybody that can come off the street and build this. You have to have the civil background, you have to have the technology background amongst your people to be able to come out and do this type of work. Walsh maintains its own equipment fleet of well over 3,000 pieces of equipment, which allows us to be self-sufficient when it comes to staffing job sites from an equipment perspective. We are, again, not relying on outside firms or outside companies to be in control of what we have promised an owner we are in control of. With our own fleet, we are 100% in control and we, it allows us to react very quickly. We were awarded the project uh, and within seven days we had to have boots on the ground and within a week after that we were able to have our own equipment on site to start clearing and grubbing to be able to start the project. It was a very very rapid process and without the ability to draw on our own equipment fleet, we probably wouldn't have been able to achieve that quick start that the owner demanded. With its extensive experience and expertise, the Walsh Group is uniquely qualified to meet the enormous challenges of constructing safe, productive and reliable state-of-the-art hydroelectric facilities. The tolerances within the hydroelectric facilities during the construction process um, are, are so strict that you can't just go in and, you know, pouring concrete doesn't mean just unloading a bunch of concrete trucks into a piece of formwork. It is, it is very, very technical in terms of the tolerances that you need to, to meet. In order to meet those tolerances, you, you have to be conscious of your quality every step of the way. And that rolls up into the, the staffs that we, that we put on these job sites that have quality in mind, second maybe only to safety. As it is with all Walsh Group projects, safety is a primary concern when constructing hydroelectric facilities. Our goal is to attain an incident and injury-free work environment for every member of our Walsh Group team. We were often working 24 hours a day, seven days a week in a very compressed schedule. And when it's 30 below zero, to get people motivated to, uh, to go out there and perform and, and also be able to get those people to perform the work safely, uh, created a, a very significant challenge. Uh, thankfully, we were able to uh, meet that challenge head on and, and perform a project that's going to be delivered uh, on time and, and successfully. There's no doubt there's a personal sense of satisfaction, not only the fact that uh, it is a green project, but just the fact that it's going to be here for 100 years and, and producing power for, for generations to come, my children, their children's children. So it, it is very satisfying.